Tonight's show, we have with us two representatives from Snitkin and Vital, Andre and Kelly. They are, they are here to explain to us the whole idea of what foreclosures are, what do they mean to us, and how we can help ourselves. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. I'm introducing them to you guys. the show. As I said to you earlier, we have two lawyers with us here representing Snitkin and Vital and Andre and Kelly. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us Thank on. Thank you for having us. No way. You know, like, I have to kind of walk guys because you guys are a little bit stiff and nervous. So <laughs> um, let's just get the first thing out because I, I know that the community doesn't really know about your law firm. So can you please just tell us a bit about the two of you as a team and the law firm? Well, my name is Andre Vital. Mm -hmm. I am an attorney here in New York City. I am originally from Haiti, um, where Pali Creole. Nice. Uh, after coming here, immigrating to the United States, I uh, went through school and and you know did my education here. And right now, I am an attorney practicing law with uh, my partner, who uh, I met in law school, and. Uh, and our firm is a new firm that's in Long Island City, New York, and uh, we decided to partner up and pretty much provide uh, quality, effective legal representation to the community. Oh, so your part now, like, you know, introduce yeah. yourself, because I, I would love for the community to get to know you guys a little bit better before we get into the questioning. Sure. My name is Kelly Snitkin. Mm -hmm. uh, Snitkin. Snitkin. <laughs> Russian. Russian. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but I am otherwise American. I was mm -hmm. born in Chicago, actually, and grew up there. Uh, and uh, also did my education here in the United States and met my partner, Mr. Vital, in law school, which was in San Francisco, mm -hmm. California. Uh, but upon graduation, we both did um, move back to New York. My family is actually from New York. They, uh, my father grew up in Queens. and. Um, and so for various reasons, we made our way back here to New York and uh, worked in several, made our way together to come to this law firm. Let me ask you a question. Like how hard it is to come up with a new idea? And, and it's like, like I said to you earlier, once you decide to take something as your own to make it happen, how much energy it takes. What made you guys decide to have uh, a law firm instead of just being partners or working somewhere else? What made you guys decide to create your own law firm? Well, uh Ever since uh, I was a, a young child, I always knew that I wanted to uh, uh, be my own boss, so to speak. You know, mm -hmm. dictate my time, dictate my efforts, dictate my, my what I want to be and what I want to do in my life. And I looked at going to law school as a, a an opportunity to be able to do that because attorneys, for the most part, we're uh, uh, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and so that's how. I always looked at it, you know, being an attorney uh, would it enable me to, to be an entrepreneur because I am selling a service, uh, I am providing a service. Yes, um, that you are. And, 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 and that's what my aspirations were always um, uh, about. And so that's what. To be our own bosses. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> mm -hmm. But more than that, uh, we had, as I said, worked at these nonprofits and mm -hmm. we saw how structured they were. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, where their budgets were going and what they were spending their time on and uh, we thought that we could maybe come together and and create something different pump pump it up a little yeah yeah bring something closer to New Yorkers that they really so you could both value. have work and within non-for-profit organizations right both doing mortgage law foreclosure defense mm -hmm. okay um, and, and for me as well you know working uh, in that area, doing loan modifications mm -hmm. uh, for borrowers who were, you know, in, in trouble um, and who were in, in, in trouble at the time. So, okay. Yeah. And you also did um, legal services with the, the youth because one of the things that I want to talk about, I know your concentration is in foreclosure law mm -hmm. and also you did some criminal law. Oh, yes. Uh, part of my practice is, is mm -hmm. criminal defense as well. 
um, while in law school, I clerked for the, both the public defender's office and the district attorney's office. So you get to see it on both point of views. Exactly. I, so I, in the district attorney's office, I got to see how um, uh, uh, crimes are, 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 are charged, mm -hmm. um, how cases are worked up. In the public defender's office, I got a chance to see, you know, how uh, uh, attorneys work vigorously to defend, to defend. Um, their clients. And so I got a little bit of both. Um, my partner, on the other hand, uh, was strictly <laughs> public defender, you know, she... Uh, right on. Yeah. So, so she... Uh, mm -hmm. And right of law school, I did a combination of immigration and criminal defense. Uh, yeah. Well, a, a representation for people who are facing criminal charges okay. and immigration consequences Ooh. simultaneously. Yes, complex stuff. Very, very complex. Mm -hmm. You know what, I, I, I want to talk to you guys about what the community, besides the, you know, the foreclosure, I, wa I want the community to understand what you guys have to offer as a new law firm. But I know, um, I want to do tr the transition. What, before I do that, I want to take a break so we can come back and then start talking about the foreclosure aspect of it. So we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Before we took a break, I, I was introducing Mr. Andre and Ms. Kelly, two lawyers representing Snitkin and Vital. Um, what they concentrate on is like mostly what you guys do is foreclosures. Um, the community in itself is really hurting from, from foreclosures. Can you just give me an idea of what foreclosures are and then we get into the definition and then afterwards we'll talk about the different groups of, of um, things that are being used, the MHA and the HAMP program that the community can benefit from. So, okay. Brief um, idea. Briefly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So foreclosure is uh, simply a lawsuit uh, that is brought by a creditor. Mm -hmm. um, in most cases, certainly in Brooklyn, but in the United States, it's a, a lender that's a financial institution or a bank. Mm -hmm. um, and they will bring an action in the form of a summons and complaint and serve the person that, who owes it. And um, what they're essentially doing is trying to collect um, on a breach of contract because a basic uh, co mortgage includes the uh, note and the mortgage that were signed at the time that the uh, loan was taken out to buy the home, mm -hmm. presumably. Um, and uh, at some point the borrower stops making payments um, pursuant to the contract. That's considered a breach and the creditor to whom the money is owed sues to collect on that debt. Okay. You know, when reading your um, website, so when I went on the website just to get an idea of what you guys do, there was the paragraph that talks about the mortgage fiasco, fraud fiasco. Um, you know, I briefly, I, I spoke mm -hmm. to you earlier and I was explaining the idea mm -hmm. of someone not making, someone making like $30,000 a year and have great credit mm -hmm. getting a $500,000 mm -hmm. right. um, mortgage loan. So can you explain that, like, well, we, why we are here in this situation? You're absolutely right. Uh, if for us to sit here and talk about the history uh, of the mortgage crisis, we would be here all night. Yes. Uh, the simple truth is, um, during the heyday uh, of the economy, when mm -hmm. everyone was 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 giving mortgages out and and folks were lined up to take those mortgages, uh, no one stopped to thought to think uh, about the consequences mm -hmm. of. Uh, giving a mortgage to someone who couldn't really afford it. Afford it. And so at the time you had brokers who were giving uh, mortgages on based on no documentation. They call mm -hmm. that no no loan no doc. Yeah. No, no loan docs. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, essentially the person would come in um, not bring any paperwork to substantiate whether or not they could actually afford the property um, and you know the broker uh, the, the, the attorneys who were sitting at the table would sign off on, on mm -hmm. those mortgages. Um, and those were the actions that pretty much uh, okay. build and build on top of, uh, of, of this debt crisis, so to mm -hmm. speak. Um, and you, got, you have some, some, in some situations where, you know, even a refinance, you know, a refinance that you, you think um, 
is supposed to give you a better um, loan right. interest rate. Yeah, but it's like two, it's like you have two mortgages yeah, to pay. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you. You, you do your research or unless you enter the situation in itself, you, you really don't know what you're getting yourself into. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, uh, during that time, you know, you had uh, situations where you had, they call it one-stop shops, where mm -hmm. you had the attorney who was in cahoots with the mortgage broker, the mortgage broker was in cahoots with the underwriter, mm -hmm. and everyone was working in, in, the, in the scheme uh, to persuade uh, uh, unsuspecting people Borrower yeah. to sign this, these do, these loan documents, which were not uh, to their best interest. And mo mm -hmm. most often, that they weren't clear on. Uh, for example, they signed mortgages that had that were interest-only payments with huge balloon payments waiting for them at the end of the life of the loan. So after 30 years of paying on a mortgage, you've never hit the principal, and you still owe 200,000 at the end of it. So you'll never have a chance of actually. Owning I just that never property. understood the whole idea of zero down payment. I. I to me, you know, if I'm going to take a $500,000 loan mm -hmm. and I'm not, I'm not putting a cent down, mm -hmm. I, in my mind, like, you know, if you use credit cards a lot, you know that's yeah. a lot of money you're going to pay on it before <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. So yeah. people never really um, understood that idea. Yeah. And then all that they see, you know, it's like using yeah. a, a, a person with an idea that, you know, if I'm a homeowner, which means that I've made it. Yeah. yeah, because a lot of people Absolutely. go with the concept like this is this is what's gonna make me mm -hmm. a citizen. This is what's gonna make me feel, but you know the whole house white picket fences mm -hmm. and a dog, mm -hmm. but without thinking about everything else that come with that house. You know, there's the light bill, there's the water, there's the property loan, tax, property. You understand? Insurance. So all yeah. you see is that mortgage. That's yeah. all you hear. Oh, it's gonna cost you like two thousand yeah. dollars. But that's all they see. Yeah. Without thinking about everything else that comes with it. Absolutely. But besides that, so let's talk about the difference between mm. the, um, you know, the MHA and the HAP. Can you explain to the public like what? Uh, I'll let my partner <laughs> start it off. So the Ma MHA is the Making Home Affordable Program. Yes. It is a government-sponsored uh, program, federal government program. Mm -hmm. It's often referred to as the Obama program. Mm -hmm. Is this um, the same thing as the HAMP? HAMP is one of the sub-programs within okay. the Making Home Affordable program. Mm -hmm. HAMP stands for the Home Affordable Modification program. program. Okay. It's kind of a lot of big words to, to say that HAMP specifically is for borrowers who fell into a temporary hardship but are back on their feet and otherwise can't afford the property and really just need a modification to to this really bad mortgage that I have just okay, described. Okay, wait, I have to ask you this question because like, sure. I, I want to be like the public and ask you this. Mm -hmm. So re modification is for someone who hit a hardship but who wants to work at it. So modification, it's not a, yeah, it's not a situation where I'm going to stop paying my my mortgage, mm -hmm. so I can get you to help me out. It's not like that. Well, this certainly what it's not. Des it's not designed. <laughs> That's because you know, I, I want people, people to understand to, that. <laughs> you know, purposely stopping to pay okay. your mortgage, and there's almost no benefit to that. Okay. Um, there is some gossip and discussion within the community for sure about the fact that modifications. Number one are the hot thing that you actually yes. need to have, which yes. is not necessarily true. And Everybody's two, doing it. <laughs> cannot get it unless you have fallen into serious default. Okay. Um, f falling into serious default, first of all, is a place where most people, especially homeowners, do not want to be. Mm -hmm. um, it brings in a huge amount of stress and anxiety. Um, it throws your budget off. You're unsure where you're going to be living, and, and each and every month, the bank. Uh, does not give you one moment of peace of mind. Uh, you will be harassed by them incessantly, both on the telephone and in the letters. They will say and do things that you think should be illegal to try to guilt you into paying your mortgage back. So, putting so it's yourself worse in than that the position, credit cards. <laughs> and it's far worse than yeah. the credit cards. They're creditors. They're, 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 they're the ultimate creditor, yeah, actually. Okay. So, the thing that I wanted to say earlier is that you meant that you t touched on this idea of no doc loans or no down payment and how absurd mm -hmm. a concept that was to you. Sp particularly in Brooklyn, but in New York City in general, uh, the wave of victims, we could say, yes. as borrowers, they are. were first generation or immigrants themselves. Definitely. Who mm -hmm. come from countries that do not have a credit system as complex and mm, unfair, essentially, as the American system. Mm -hmm. And when uh, you're young and you have children and you're absolutely right that the American dream is owning property. Yeah. It's more than just a dream. It is the only um, one of the only ways to social mobility, to yeah. this economic exactly. mobility. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then 
and and you are you don't and these people didn't go to the bank and ask for five hundred thousand dollars when my partner was discussing the collusion between brokers lawyers and real estate agents they came to your door mm -hmm. and they knocked on your door and said how would you like five hundred thousand dollars without any income verification required mm -hmm. very few people in the world will turn that offer down particularly the ones who do not understand the system Absolutely. well you know it, it's one of those things that I know for sure that people that I know have been affected by it um, there are different programs within um, the whole remodification right I know there are six programs that you guys use to to talk about it can you explain the six differently the the, the lean but Ooh, before we six, huh? Yeah, okay. <laughs> before we get into that, let's take a break. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break, and then we come back, we, we can talk about it. Yeah. All right. So I, I am hoping at least the community is getting um, what we're talking about or you know, taking notes of it. So we'll be right back. Welcome back. Before we took a break, we were talking about the different step of remodification, and I, you know, I wanted people to understand like there are six different um, ways we can make this work. Instead of just stop paying your rent and then saving the money, so we could, you know, you could go into remodification. Yeah. Like there, there are. Can you get into the six position? Well, yes. Um, a lot of people have uh, this. There's a misconception out there mm -hmm. that if you stop paying your mortgage uh, that the bank will uh, be more likely to help you modify the mortgage. Mm -hmm. That's not correct. Um, if you're experiencing some hardship where you lost your income because your job is not giving you the same hours or you got hurt on the job or you pretty much, you know, you lost your job, um, mm -hmm. uh, that's considered a hardship because uh, your income is not the same as it was at the time you bought the property. Okay. Okay. And so uh, the HAMP program um, looks at that. Um, and as part of, of that process, the, your loan, uh, your servicing company or your mortgage company uh, will ask you uh, to submit uh, a package to explain, so to speak, your, your financial situation to them. Um, so the misconception that's out there that you should stop paying your mortgage in order to get a modification that I, I would not advise okay, that. Okay, can I, can, I, can I just kind of like bring it mm -hmm. to the term that I know what people are doing. Like, mm -hmm. well, I, I, I'm, I don't know what everyone is doing, but mm -hmm. I, this is what I'm hearing. And as part of the community, there are two, only two terms that I'm hearing out there, mm -hmm. a whole lot of that like, people can do to, make, to help themselves. Mm -hmm. One is remodification, and the second one is short sale. Mm -hmm. Is that, you know, give me an idea of like, okay, which one works in... Well, there are certain, there's about six steps or six yes. different um, options that are available. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the first is called reinstatement, yes. where if you miss uh, s several uh, months of, of mortgage payments, mm -hmm. the bank will say, well, okay, um, I I'll put you back on track to paying all, you know, to pay or your mortgage if you can make a lump sum payment uh, of all the arrears, of mm -hmm. all the arrears the past due um, and then we'll start you off on your regular monthly payment. Wow. Um, same plan, same sa original mortgage. mortgage. Same original mortgage, same nothing bad. changes. How easy is that though? It, it, it's not easy. It's not really No possible. one has. Exactly. Yeah. That lump sum of money. If I had it, I would have paid my, exactly. paid my mortgage. Exactly. No one has it. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, you know, the bank representatives were the ones that were telling people to mm -hmm. Miss one or two payments to 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 to, to, to get, get qualified for modification. modification. So and what's that's the not second the case. one? The the second one is called a forbearance. Mm -hmm. That's when the bank tells you, okay, I know you're experiencing some difficulty right now for about six months. I'll put you on a plan where you pay half the mortgage, your monthly mortgage, mm -hmm. and then we'll keep the other half on the side. But they don't explain to to to, to the public 
what keeping the other half on the side means. What does that mean? Typically what that means is that at the end of six months, you end up having a lump sum payment of all the oh half payments that you've used. Just arrears. Of all the arrears. So it's, again, you're still you're back, going back to your to original to bad interest. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Huge amounts of monthly payment adjustable mm -hmm. so that it will adjust again in a few months. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's the third one? There was another plan um, called a short refinance. That's typically mm -hmm. for uh, government uh, sponsored agencies such as Fannie Mae, mm -hmm. uh, Freddie Mac. They were offering people who were current at the time mm -hmm. if they're experiencing a hardship uh, the government would do uh, a, a refinance where uh, they didn't have to pay any type of refinancing fees. Okay. And what that would help people do is lower their interest okay. monthly, uh, their monthly mortgage interest payments um, to something to like a base rate of 4% or, or even lower than that. Now, the thing about that plan is that not a lot of people have government uh, mortgages, mortgages, Fannie Mae, Fannie Mae mortgages. Okay. So, you know, you got you ran into the situation where no one really qualified for that. Okay. And if you had missed m payments before, you wouldn't qualify either. Oh way. my, you had to be up to date. Exactly. <laughs> so what's the fourth one? <laughs> um, the Just fourth one is, is before you get to the critical stage. Mm -hmm. uh, the fourth one would be loan modification. Okay. That's what everyone when that's I was. That's what I know now. Yeah, yeah, that's when I was a housing counselor. That's all we push for. We push for everyone to you know get loan modifications. You know get you all your paperwork together, your tax returns, your bank statements, your pay stubs, any everything that will verify um, your income mm -hmm. um, and send it to the bank and somebody at the bank would process it. Now back then, there were no rules. The bank, the bank and the bank representative were just doing whatever they wanted to do. Okay. You would send in your paperwork and you several days later they would lose it or they didn't know what happened to it. And so everyone kept Everyone was frustrated by the process. Yeah. You know, even as a counselor myself, when, you know, a couple of years back when I started doing this for people, um, you know, it, just got confused. It, it was just too much. It was, it was a, so, so much of a hassle. Mm -hmm. You know, people losing, you know, people providing do documents to the bank and the bank losing it. People calling up and talking to maybe 50 to 60 different people throughout that process. So wow. you understand, the okay, modification I, was very hard at that time. All right, let, let, let me get this mm -hmm. thing straight. Mm -hmm. You guys are two lawyers that are representing foreclosures. Mm -hmm. What do you think the community needs now, or how can you guys help the community? All right, so the modification program was very pumped up by the government, mm -hmm. in part because they were um, having a relationship with the banks or money was being mm -hmm. exchanged. You might have heard of this in the newspapers. Yes. Um, and so uh, that was a uh, heavily uh, advertised media, and this is what uh, most people think that they want. But it, we don't, as lawyers, think that's the case. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly in New York State, there is some great new law mm -hmm. out there. Okay. So that there are ways to fight foreclosure, which is this basic lawsuit that you're seeing, you become up against as a borrower when you stop paying. Um, besides begging the bank for a refinance or a modification, mm -hmm. which the bank, even though they're being paid to give them, seem to not be interested in doing still. Okay. So what we say, actually, is get a lawyer. Get a lawyer. And then have that lawyer research your closing documents, mm -hmm. your current loan situation, your current financial situation, and of all, uh, not just of these six choices, but also mm -hmm. of the legal options that are now available, which are becoming rapidly more available as New York State is state law is becoming more borrower friendly. Okay, is to pursue those other options. Modification okay. may not be what works for you, um, or that uh, the, the part general of the, process yeah. of going through the modification might be worth mm -hmm. you. Getting the lawyer and having the lawyer use the court system to get the bank to give you the best deal possible is the way that we recommend. Mm -hmm. okay. So so going back to the last two, two yeah. um, uh, components of the program, um, uh, if you get to the point where you've defaulted, modification doesn't work, you don't qualify, They'll, they'll they'll offer you something called a an opportunity to short sale the property. Yes. And short sale, what it means is that um, you sell the house, the property at a lower value. 
um, than what you owe the bank. Than, than what you owe to the, the, is it like you sell it back to the bank, or is just anybody? Well, that's actually what's happening <laughs> because there's nobody available to okay. buy these overly inflated, outrageously overvalued homes in New York. So you York. end up selling a house it back that's to now it. worth three hundred thousand that the, that you owe the bank five hundred thousand on. Oh so it's the bank's the only one standing on the steps mm -hmm. at the auction. Yeah, waiting okay. to actually buy that house. Yeah, oh and, 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 and the short sale, the short sale process takes a long time. You know, yes. it, 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 we we sit here for a while talk to, to talk about the short sale process, <laughs> but it takes. It's almost like sending in a, a whole new modification packet. You're working with a broker. Um, it, it, it's very cumbersome. Uh, lastly, it's something called a deed in lieu. Right mm -hmm. before the foreclosure, if you don't want to. Uh, have the bank start the foreclosure action against you, you could sign over the note to, to the bank and pretty much say, I give up, here it is, give them and the that's house. it. So what, then what do you have at the end? We, we don't recommend a, <laughs> most of these programs. We recommend, as we said, getting a lawyer. Yeah. And uh, fighting. And the lawyer fighting the foreclosure. Yeah. Because it's available to you now in okay. New York. So if anyone would like to get in, because we are at the end of our show, and I, I know we have so much that we can talk about, yeah. but we have a short period of time. So if anybody would like to talk to you guys and get more information, is there a number, a website, you know, anything yes. that they can well, go Our to website is www.snitkinvitallaw.com, S-N-I-T-K-I-N-V-I-T-A-L-Law.com, and the phone number is uh, toll-free, 888-543-5523. Okay, email anything like that. Well, you please go to our website and uh, direct. Because I think yeah, contact us. yeah, direct contact. And then there's mm -hmm. so much that people can learn on yeah. your website. And, and one more thing is that you know I speak Creole, my parlé Creole, pour communiquer ici. So si nous avons un problème, nous devons être les moins moins là, moins moins appliqué pour nous. Moi j'ai quelques clients qui a ici et tout. So comment a ici moi qu'on est tribulation que nous nous n'a pas eu. So moins là, ma appliqué pour nous, bon moins quoi, ok? Yeah, and I mm -hmm. think the community really needs that because a lot mm -hmm. of time people have the misconception, like I said to you, mm -hmm. there is only two things that you can do, either short sell or remodification, and the remodification is to stop paying your mortgage. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's what's out there. That's what we're yes. hearing. Yeah. Unless we talk to people like you, unless we come to programs like this, where we're getting a different idea of what we can do to do better. Yeah. So on that note, mm -hmm. I'm ending my show, mm -hmm. and then I am hoping that the community have learned something from this. And then um, that you guys would get in touch with them. It's my pleasure. We hope to be back. Thank you, you will definitely, because, yeah, you know, I'm holding you on to that. I, I want to be back. <laughs> I had a great time. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you for coming. Thank you very much. This is the end of our show. I'll see you back next time.